What is going on, everyone? Badger here. Make sure to like and sub, and let's get into this. So, Disney Star Wars is continuing along, and they have the Acolyte coming out, which is going to shamelessly, as they continue to do, uh, probably take and change whatever what was once established Star Wars. That's fine. At this point, it's just a morbid curiosity of what they're going to do. Like, you know there's going to be a car crash. You just want to see how bad it is, unfortunately. And, uh... Yeah, all of the comments by Leslie Headland about uh, this is going to be Frozen meets Kill Bill on top of uh, all the other, you know, Star Wars fans aren't happy for the most part for uh, various reasons. All of them, all the Raylos aren't happy because you killed off, uh, you killed off uh, Kylo and uh, the, the, the people that don't like Ray are unhappy because you're bringing her. I mean, I'm happy because I'm going to get Charmino Bay Genoi. But my point is, everyone's a little, a little moody right now and. Uh, Something we only had seen originally in Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power community, forgive me for using that word, but when they ratioed every single trailer that came out to protest the Rings of, uh, Rings of Power and its abuse or of canon or lack thereof, here, the Acolyte trailer is, has like way been ratioed, and I think it's over 400,000 dislikes at this point, but... Uh, the Acolyte trailer gets huge amount of YouTube dislikes, still breaks Lucasfilm record, which I think they tried to spin that as it's a really good record, but well, we'll see. Uh, the new trailer for Star Wars The Acolyte has received an unwanted reception on YouTube, to say the least, uh, but there's some good news to go with that. Sure. Official trailer for The Acolyte, which was released earlier in the week, has garnered more dislikes on the YouTube. More specifically, the Star Wars trailer, which has been viewed over 82 million times, 8.2 million times in three days, uh, it's more than that now, uh, has gotten 165 likes and 366 dislikes. And like I said, that is that number is over 400,000 dislikes at, that, at this point. Meanwhile, the trailer has nevertheless surpassed 51.3 million views in 24 hours across all platforms, which was touted by StarWars.com as it's it's like saying, "Oh, we had we had a hundred thousand people come to our restaurant. Isn't that a nice?" And then you go and you talk to the people, and it's like, "Yeah, but the hundred thousand people, like seventy thousand of them, said it was horrible and would never come back." Yeah, we're right, but it was still a record that they all came and they said the thing they said. Okay. Um, <laughs> The official trailer for the Acolyte, which was released early this week. Oh, yeah, sorry, that, there was that. Uh, the first trailer for the Acolyte gave fans a tease of what's to come in the next. And by tease, it's, I think it's more of a threat. And now, granted, they're covering, uh, it's set in the High Republic 100 years before the Phantom Menace, because, of course, now they connect it to Phantom Menace uh, timeline. And anyone that is alive because of long lifespan could potentially be used. Yoda and Yaddle sort of have to be used. The Azrael proof. Remember the one with the big, long, funny neck that looked like a gray alien? He got to be alive. Ch Ch Chewbacca is alive at this point. He's young, but he's alive if you want to go deep cut. So it's not like there's free from abuse. But And and Leslie proudly said that, oh, I was I was very surprised, actually. She doesn't have a high voice. She actually sounds, she sounds like Harvey. I was very surprised that they gave me uh, access to the canon. And so, oh, I could just do whatever I want, which means she got that Plagueis book. And she's up. Oh, Plagueis is now a black woman. Tenumbrus is now a black woman. Everyone is gay because everything's going to be gay, queer coded because that's what she said, right? Oh, it's a queer women's story so that I can show all the queer children something that I wanted to see when I was a queer child. And if it was a drinking game, every time she said queer in the interview, you would be dead halfway through. Uh, the Acolyte season two is already being discussed. Well, before we get to the, the, the basic premise of the show, if you haven't been paying attention to it, there's someone going around taking out them Jedi one by one, going up to the top Jedi. So that's the Kill Bill connection, I guess. And then we've heard that Amandala Stenberg is playing a Jedi and a Sith character. One of them raised by the Jedi, one of them raised by the Sith. The Sith character is going up. So that's the Frozen connection, the two sisters. Horrible analogies. And when you see what she's read into Frozen, that's a whole nother thing. But regardless, Acolyte Season 2 is already being discussed. Yeah. And uh, X-Men 97 Season 3 was being discussed, and Bo DeMeo still got bounced out. So that don't mean shit. Uh, but sure. Speaking of an interview earlier in the week, 
Uh, former Harvey Weinstein personal assistant showrunner Leslie Headland revealed that she currently has plans, I bet she does, for a second season of The Acolyte, and that she wrote the ending of the first season as not an ending to the whole show, as you do, as you do. Headland noted that she pitched The Acolyte as a multi-season show to Lucasfilm before going on to say, there are a lot of things at the end of the season that I think are narrative threads that are not tied up for sure. Okay. Uh, and there is uh, Mandela Stenberg. Uh, she's got an L at the end of her name. Just say Amanda. But uh, there she is, the character. And uh, despite that, Headland did go on to confirm that the story of the first season will be wrapped up, even if more stories are planned. There isn't something where you feel like you're on the edge of your seat to have that catharsis. And then you have to wait two years. Headland said, these things take forever to make, so I would have to make a season that didn't feel complete, even if it was still open for more story. And well, you know what? Shout out to her for not doing what uh, Invincible Season 2 uh, did and uh, just releasing four episodes and pissing everyone off. After Not that that would have been applicable to this, but at least the thought was there. Good for you, former Harvey Weinstein personal assistant Leslie Headland. Let me know what you think of this. Are you excited for The Acolyte? Beyond the fact that we're all going to meme and you're get to, we're just going to get to enjoy the downfall of what's not Star because Star Wars is still alive and well. Star Wars, as I say, is still alive and well in the expanded universe and the first six movies. And I'll give you the Fallen Order games with Cal Kestis. Cal can come in, but everyone else, you're out. You're out. I'm sorry, even the Clone Wars. I'm, I'm sorry. I know there's some good parts. They, they got to go. They got to go. Uh, you can read the Dark Horse comics that don't have Ahsoka because I'm sorry, spoiler, creepy character. Creep character, at least in the beginning, the inclusion in the beginning with the halter top, the 13 year old halter top that Dave put her in. Just saying, food for thought. I know she turned into something great, but now she's she's literally the fucking Star Wars Gandalf and uh, doing what Luke should be doing. But like I said, just go watch Star Wars and read Star Wars in the expanded universe, and we'll all meme whatever the hell Disney is doing right now. Make sure to like, share, and sub if you've done that. Thank you. If you're gonna do that, thank you. And well. Bye.